So I'm going to talk about you and your competitors too. So uh, I'm going to give an overview of about 10 different robots. Uh, so because a lot of people are into it. And uh, you know, the Germans are into it, the Italians are the English, and also I have the Chinese. So we'll talk about that. So my name is Vincent Everts. I'm a trend watcher. And I talk about what does all this digital stuff do to the way we work. And um, I, um, in 2016, I looked at this industry. I am not a cleaning guy. I know nothing about the cleaning industry, and I know nothing about the keeping my own stuff clean. I do know something about the digital trends, and I've evaluated this industry compared to all the other technologies we're looking at. So last year, I did a presentation like that, which has been watched a couple of thousand times, which is online. It's interesting to see the difference. Last year was the first time that all these connected devices came up. You know, the Internet of Clean came up. And uh, people were talking about the robots and virtual reality, etc. cetera. And uh, let's first talk about the cleaning industry, how many people work there, and how good you're doing. Um, let's introduce it. Welcome at Interclean. My name is Vincent Everts, Trend Watcher. There's 30,000 people coming out of 150 countries um, in the next couple of days. About the cleaning industry, it's 65 billion euro. Three million people are working on it, so it's about 20,000 uh, euro per person. So it's not a huge amount per person, but there's 180,000 companies. And a number of them are really involved in innovation, digital innovation, big data, artificial intelligence, connected car, connected devices. And we're going to take a look how we are going to use that for smart, evidence-based cleaning. Come and take the tour. OK. Um, you're, talking, you're living in an industry where in Europe, 3.3 million people are working there, 66 billion. So it's about 20,000 uh, a person. In China, 10 million people are uh, working on it. So 10 million people are doing professional cleaning. And it's 70% are working part-time. 70% are women. Uh, all the companies are, tend to be extremely small. You have done, in the last 20 years, 9% growth in sales per year. So that's pretty good. And 4.5% per year growth in personnel. So it has been growing. And about 66% of the companies are outsourcing at this very moment. So uh, let's look at the innovation. There's a, here on the side, you have all the innovation awards. And I took, in three minutes, I went through about 15 different nominations. And uh, let's take a quick look, and then I'll dive deeper. Oh, sorry. Let me give you a quick overview of the innovation award winners. And uh, first. SAT has one with Torque, and they have a recycling system which take the paper towels and uh, make toilet paper out of them. So the recycling started four years ago. I have a separate interview on them. Then here, this is a great little startup company, and they make spray buttons uh, with, with normal with normal uh, with normal um, pressure. And uh, it's about three people, and they have a very innovative way to work. On the other hand, we have a more established company. And uh, this company is Werner and Metz, and they recycle the plastic 100% or 50%. Let's continue on this side. And here we have a dashboard, global supply, uh, global supply solution from Impacts. And th it's really important that all the connected stuff needs to be integrated into, uh, into a dashboard. In the healthcare arena, we have this one, a UV lamp. And instead of spraying an operating room to clean it, it is a nice EV lamp in different forms and shapes. Category winner is Vermop. They have a connected cleaning car. They have a system which is based with Google technology. Scans the room. You basically can uh, walk through it. And the, the cleaner gets extremely, connect, extremely detailed instructions. Every, everything in this car, even if you just swap the floor is being tracked and traced. Is this going to be the ultimate control tool, or is it really very efficient? On the other hand, we have Diversi, which has a linen, a linen uh, solution. And it basically, I can open it up. Yeah, it basically uh, has uh, a uh, mixing system of all the chemicals, and it optimizes eight machines at a time. Then this is a very nice innovation, clean water. Instead of basically cleaning the glass and then drying it, this makes very clean water. It takes all the dirt, dirt out, of the, the, out of the water and it is a very efficient machine, can help four people at the same time. And it's called Ungar. And then we have Sir, a nominee, which is a cleaning uh, solution. And this thing vibrates. 
So that is a category winner. It vibrates. It's small, compact, it vibrates, and it cleans the floor faster. Let's go here and look at uh, Rolatos. And Rolatos is a German manufacturer of robots. And what they have, they have an easy way to program it. But also here, you can see when it basically is out of batteries, it comes and it, uh, and it basically uh, charges itself. All the robots yeah, are starting to do that. And we have a small one called Marvin. And Marvin is also, it has a two key operation. One is to program, you run around with it, and then it basically redoes it. It starts at about 13,000 euro. And we have the overall category winner and the overall winner of Interclean. That's called Kurgan. And Kurgan is also an, uh, a robot which says, hey, I want to have supplies, I want to have electricity. It comes back. It does about four hours on, uh, on batteries, starts at 20,000 euro. And this robot, is, which is fully autonomous because it doesn't need to be supplied anymore by, by anything, um, that is the overall category winner and the overall winner of Interclean. Congratulations. Okay, so those were the innovations of the uh, different industries. I'm now going to go and look a little bit more at the uh, different categories. Let's first look, like, uh, look at green. Hall number seven, which is uh, here on the side, has a big waste management lab. Lots of uh, presentations. So let's look how we're doing as Netherlands and as Europe. We have the zero waste lab and the cleaning industry is so getting so much more sustainable. They of course are a huge polluter of stuff, but they're recycling a lot of things. There's products of that and they also become aware that they basically use a lot of plastic and that is not so very good. So in Hole 7 there's presentations about what to do with waste management, how they separate it at the source and how you can, for example, take paper towels into toilet paper. There's machines which are demonstrated over here. Every day there's presentations about the waste management and what you can do about it. Zero Waste Foundation. How much do we recycle? Well, we in the Netherlands, the companies do 70% recycling. And if you have about the households, in Amsterdam it's only 15%. They don't care, they don't have room. But in the rest of the country it goes up to 50%. And we in the Netherlands are doing pretty good. Germany is better, Scandinavia is good, but for the rest of Europe it's basically, they're really debating if they should just throw it out that is already recycling for them so uh, there's a lot of room to improve but we're starting so that's hole number seven that's a really nice hole what i also liked about hole number seven is that there are a lot of chinese companies which have all kinds of innovations and uh, innovation happens at the edge and these small companies are really cool about it okay then uh the category winner um in, uh, in sustainable and green started their own process. And that is really interesting to see. If you want to do recycling, you have to do everything, 100%. Of course, it's connected. It will tell you how many towels are used and when it needs to be cleaned up and it's a uh, full census. But this is a separate container and this is also collected separate by the cleaners. All these trash cans with the towels are put in a separate container and Stork is picking up the trash and is making toilet paper out of it. Okay, now this is really interesting. Innovation Award, and what do they do? They make sure that they don't use packaging so much. And look how beautiful they do this. You basically have a box, you put in material, you close it, and then you only have to put in pressure. And how do you put the pressure in? They have a little box, or you can use this, you know, your own bicycle pump, or you can uh, use high pressure. And then you have Basically, you can spray without gas. <laughs> Very good for the camera. Lucar is an Italian company with a thousand people and in 2008 they said, we need to do something about recycling. So they take this kind of packaging, you know, which is from the milk and from the orange juice, the carton packaging, and they turn it into paper, cellulose and aluminium. And then what do they create out of that? They create this kind of products. So the container and the paper stuff. And how many have they done? Well, in 2013 to 2016, they have done 2.8 billion cartons recovered. 2.8 billion, it's pretty nice. They saved a million, 2.2 million trees. So, an Italian company started in 2008. Now it's hot, now everybody wants it, but they started on time and they're now doing it. 
And if you want to have that, if you want to do this, normally these companies have started five, six, seven, eight years ago. And now, of course, green is hip. Uh, green is uh, exciting. Uh, a lot of these services are cheaper because the trash, uh, to get rid of the trash is cheaper. So if you recycle it into, uh, into toilet paper, it's actually, and they come separately to, bring up the, to, to pick up the container, it's cheaper than throwing everything away. What I saw in this industry is that the most simple things uh, can be very effective. You know, like clean water. Clean water, we saw that it was one of the nominees. Let's see how you can uh, do different things with water. And we have nanotechnology here at Interclean. You put this on the window and then it's completely water resistant. And it stays clean forever. This is Ungur, and what kind of innovation do they have? They had to explain to me three times. They have clean water, clean water, and they clean not with soap, not with chemicals, but with clean water. And what's so special about that? Well, normally if you take water, it leaves a residue. And now they have this machine, cleans 5,000 liters per hour, and it does it in a very simple way. The taking the filters out is very much uh, computerized. You don't have to be a wizard to operate. It can do four people at the same time. And of course, just clean the windows and walk away is so much more efficient. German product and nominated. Yeah, so I never thought that clean water was interesting, but it turns out that these machines have been there before, but to, uh, to, to make sure that you manage the filters and to put in the right uh, variables was very difficult. Now it produces uh, 500 liters an hour with no problem, everybody can use it. Okay, last year, or two years ago, in 2016, augmented reality was very big. I mean, if you look at our school, the kids are constantly wa walking around with virtual reality, uh, it's, it's, it's really big. I mean, in the industry, people are using virtual reality for training purposes, design purposes, to make sure that they're everywhere. And it's growing very rapidly. This is the HoloLens, where you can look at a uh, uh, hole and then see all kinds of things in there, which are not really there, but they uh, look extremely real. Uh, Facebook just announced that they're coming with a new VR headset, which is available now. And the, the, the new one is only 199 euro instead of 700 euro. You don't, need a, an, uh, you don't need a mobile phone with it or you don't need a computer. It's a completely standalone system with 1,000 apps for 199. And Mark Zuckerberg has promised us that we will get so much VR into our timeline. And he, you know, he has 2 billion people and we're all doing whatever he says. He's going to present this uh, and push this uh, very much uh, forward. So that's really interesting. In 2016, the category award winner was already working with uh, augmented reality. A lot of instructions up to you. And you can also walk around and it will keep you. Yeah, if you can keep the camera out there. <laughs> it basically tells you exactly how to take it out, how to refill it, and you can make sure that everything is really done on the right way. So augmented reality is used to instruct people and to make them but now, 2018, nothing's there. You know, this industry is really doing what it knows best. And that's basically using the, the, the people and the basic material and the same kind of machines. There's not much innovation from the digital arena. They're slowly getting smarter, but this kind of stuff never worked. Let's see what I could find in, uh, in VR. Okay, there's three holes here, which are all about toilet cleaning and effect there is showing some innovation, but it's really, last year it was really hot. Augmented reality, virtual reality is the only one I've been able to find to be trained how to clean a toilet room. You know, this guy is really doing a very fantastic job of being trained. But last year it was everywhere, augmented reality was popular, they won the innovation award. This year, not so much. This industry is not really accelerating. But what you can see, that machine, that machine is 700 euros. And this amount of producers no. of towels and hygiene systems. And then the only thing is they're getting smart, but it's going very slowly. So uh, the VR glasses you saw were 700 euros, and you had to have a very expensive uh, uh, machine for that. Now it's 199, and it's much faster, much easier to program. So we'll see some innovation on that uh, thing. Then also, let me show you a technology which everybody's very excited to in all industries, except in the cleaning industry. I wasn't able to find anything with artificial intelligence. We have a huge amount of data. It needs to be smarter. We need to know evidence-based cleaning. We need to figure out what works, what's not. We need to have smart ways to work with people. And um, my most popular gadget at home is Google Home. Does anybody have Alexa or, uh, or Google Home? Yeah, what? 
So let me show you, this is the most popular tool I have, and let me show you why. Everybody's always talking to Google Home, because it okay. really helps us uh, to organize our life. Okay, playing morning playlist. Okay, Google, play music in all rooms. Okay, Google, I'm listening. Your flight to Portland is delayed by 30 minutes. Change my dinner reservation tonight from 7.30 to 8. Your reservation at Andina is now confirmed for 8 p.m. Hey, Google, text Louise. Flight is delayed. Dinner moved to 8. So we, we use this for everything. And then you have a thing like that. You know, it's really practical and handy. Now, this is coming. The next version is that it can re is really good in natural language processing. Google is better than a human being. It can listen to you better than your partner. It understands you better. That's really scary. And let's hear, they just gave, uh, two weeks ago, they gave a presentation of the new level of AI, how it can talk to you. You're going to hear two conversations. One is a very easy one. Somebody's going to make an appointment. And secondly, somebody's talking to a restaurant, and they do not know English at all. They speak horrible English. And let's see how Google, and this is also the Google, which is going to be in your phone in a couple of months, can talk to other human beings. But even in the US, 60% of small businesses don't have an online booking system set up. So what you're going to hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. Let's listen. Go oh, have something else here. Hi, I'm calling to book a woman's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Perfect, so I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great, thanks. Great, have a great day, bye. This Hi, um, I'd like to reserve a table for Wednesday the 7th. For seven people? Um, it's for four people. Four people when? Um, Today, next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, actually we need to for like upper like five people. For four people you can come. How long is the wait usually to uh, be seated? For when tomorrow or weekday or? For next Wednesday, uh, the 7th. Oh, no, it's not too busy. You, you, you can come for four people, okay? Oh, I got it. We're now seeing that chatbots, which are getting to your, uh, you know, just by, with text. Vodafone did a, uh, on the website, did a chatbot uh, with Watson technology. 70% of all the interactions were handled completely by Watson, and 30% had to be going to a human being. But the people were more happy when Watson helped them than when a human being helped them, because they were much more responsive and faster and that kind of stuff. In four years, you will not be able to figure out on WhatsApp if you're talking to a human being or a computer. You saw how good this is. And this is coming to your phone. This is really scary. But also, this kind of technology will be used to talk to people, but also to search through huge amount of data and take the right decisions, which we're going to see later. Healthcare. We have hole number nine, which is next hole, is uh, completely filled with healthcare. And there, really, it's so important to avoid all these germs and all these infections. They're extremely expensive. And what is the most expensive, uh, what's the most expensive problem in healthcare? Is that these infections happen because people don't wash their hands. Now with these tools, we can make sure that uh, we can figure out that people wash their hands. So let's take a look what, what they have there. Hole nine is dedicated to healthcare cleaning. And that's where the margins are the biggest, but also the interest is really important that it stays clean. They have built an operating room and we have some innovation awards here. The Galaxy Moonbeam free and two different versions. Let's see it in action. Diversi has got an, a nomination award for this lamp. Instead of spraying a gas and cleaning the operating room, they have a special UV lamp. 
washing your hands is so amazingly important and people don't do it in the hospitals. So here I can basically see my, uh, my haze being sprayed and it also gives you statistics. And then of course you want to know the moment you walk out of the toilet, you should be warned you didn't wash your hands the correct way. And that will prevent many deaths and many problems. And this dispenser, you know, nowadays costs not so much anymore. It costs about 200 euro, and, and a service board like that costs about uh, 50 uh, euro per year. So really, it's not the cost anymore. Everything becomes connected, and there is no excuse anymore. I talked to a number of the Chinese companies. Normally, when you have a dispenser, it's 30 euros. When you have a connected one, it's 150 euros. They say that within two years, the production will move to China, will become more massive, and it maybe will add 10 or 10 euros uh, to the production price. And that means that it can be less than 50 cents per month extra to have a connected dispenser than to have an, uh, a dumb uh, dispenser. So. Another technology which we're very excited about to investigate, to do all kinds of, um, uh, to, to, to figure out what's going wrong are drones. Drones are used in industry a lot. They're used to, uh, for logistical purposes, to, uh, to, to show, to basically deliver something or to inspect. I have not been able to find any kind of drone technology. And it's really unbelievable because, I mean, drones in Holland, uh, we have one company, Postenel, they can deliver to 95% of the people within four minutes and the total cost is less than 50 cents to deliver a package of one or two pounds. So it should be also coming to the logistic industry in, uh, in, uh, in, in the cleaning industry, but there's nothing to be seen yet. Then everything is going to be connected. But how are all these companies working together? Do we have an open, open ecosystem where I say, oh, you have a soap dispenser or a machine of brand A, and it will work perfectly with the back office and of the, uh, of the uh, dashboard of company B? Is it so? No. Everybody makes their own standards. Everybody just says, oh, connect to me. I'll be the center of your universe, and I'll make sure that everything happens. And oh, yeah, we'll integrate the competition, but we will not give our data to other people. Who will make that standardization? And I, uh, I went to the ISSA to see if they come up with standards. Interclean used to be called ISSA Interclean, but now they basically separate it. ISSA is having a lot of shows all around the world, and Interclean is doing Istanbul and Amsterdam, but they still work together very much. Now, what's important about ISSA, the worldwide cleaning organization, is what are they doing with standards? Everything is going to be connected. All data is going to be everywhere, and are they going to be used uh, among each other? Is the soap dispenser from one brand going to be used for the back office of another? This is a very old-fashioned industry. They really say, hey, we're innovating, but they're innovating inside themselves. They're connecting everything, making dashboard. The second step is, a, hey, we support other brands in our dashboard. But the third one is, do you give your data to other people so everything may be truly in, uh, in connected? And that's what ISSA is trying to do, but so far, it's a lot of work. And this is not a very open, open source, open data-minded industry. So we'll see how that progresses year over year. So the interesting thing, the cleaning industry is dominated by Europe. Europe are the real innovators. And within Europe, they're really the, 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 the Germans are number one. And what you now see is that the Germans are now getting together and making standards and that the rest of the world hopefully will adapt them. Because we, normally, if you go to any kind of industry, other industry, it's open source, it's open standards, we need to work together. No, nobody can dominate. Even com companies like IBM say, hey, we're, everything is open. Uh, in this industry, everybody is more closed off. And that needs to be fixed because we, before we can really be smart. Because smart and connectivity is coming to this market. Uh, we're going to 20 billion connected devices, which allows us to make sure that we know who has been in the room, how dirty is that room, how many time did people spend in the room, sensors everywhere, big data everywhere, and it's going to be very cheap. Because what you also see that these sensors, they used to be hundreds of euros, and they're now going to be tens of euros. So if you have a people counter, it will be about 30 euro. And if you then want to connect it to the internet, it can go through Wi-Fi, but Wi-Fi is more uh, difficult to maintain. It's not always reliable. So now there is 
is a mobile system, you know, it's called LoRa and you have 5G for the Internet of Things. And if you want to connect a machine for a whole year and basically it's telling you when it's full or when it needs service or how many hours it makes, it costs about three euro uh, a year, three to four euro a year. If the soap dispenser or, the, or the, the container wants to say it's full, that is for very small money is that now possible, but we need to integrate and we need to have the data standards uh, done. So let's first look at something which is not smart and then we go progressively smarter. In Hall 7, they have a lot of Chinese companies with relatively simple things. And also, interesting, they have parts here. This is the motor company. They have a lot of different motors. But if you then look, of course, because motors are nice, but they also have complete uh, machines. Now, let's take a look at this one. They're not connected to the internet. Why is that? Come on, China. But they do 10,000 square meters per hour. They can do five hours on batteries. And this machine, cost about 5,000 euros. So that is Chinese innovation. Very low price and a lot of product, but not much innovation. This is, of course, this is what everybody's using. And they have colors. They have the colors of my country, and they have all the colors you want. Yeah. Innovation in color. Buyer scan, also color. JU Textile, also color. Yeah, so those are very simple innovation. So now let's look at the level of uh, the level of connectivity. It goes up and it becomes smarter. This is a category winner, and what I find very important for this industry is that the amount of control we want to have over the cleaning people. Do we want to give? tools to the cleaning people so they can be more independent and they can be more uh, free to, to optimize their work? Or do we want to make sure that they do have to do everything at every step of the way, the way we want to? And this is a little bit just like the teachers. We want to control the teachers more. We want to control the doctors more. But also we want to control the cleaners more. And we want to see which direction that goes to. Two years ago, I talked about ICE because they were the first manufacturer, they started in 2012, to have connected cars, uh, connected uh, machines. They now have 7,000 in the market. They don't have a robot yet, that's coming next time, but they've learned something. And the most interesting thing to learn that everybody thinks that these kinds of machines work two hours a day. That's also what the battery does. They turned out it only does 20 minutes a day. And 20 minutes a day is way less than the people think themselves. Vermop is nominated for the Innovation Award. What do they have? They have a cleaning car. But this cleaning car is part of a bigger system. First, we have a Google-like 3D scanner, which runs around and basically tells you the map of the, uh, of the building. And then, based on the backup system, the, uh, the, skill, the cleaner gets instructions where to go and how to do it. And everything is censored. Even this one, when I do this, when I put it in or out, it is basically tracked and traced. <laughs> so you have an enormous amount of efficiency. You know exactly where everybody is because also there's an internal navigation system that you know where this car is. It's sold as a concept. We don't know the prices yet, how much it adds to it, but it's supposed to be much cheaper and it gives you a limited amount of control of people. So is this a good thing? Or is this a horrible thing? FemeMap is clearly a very innovative company because everybody is here looking at the new machine, which has lost weight, is connected, and much smarter and efficient. Nominated, Orbot from San Diego. And first, they make from water, they make ozone. You know, have nice electronics, and the kill factor of all kinds of germs goes up quite a bit. But that's not really what's so interesting. They have these kinds of machines to clean the floor, but then they make them autonomous. And that's really here. They have lithium ion batteries, and it's a vacuum cleaner. It, uh, it is a mixer. It does ozone. And um, you know, it, it basically, you don't need a power cord. And that saves 50% of labor. It's a pain in the butt to have that thing. So it costs a little bit more money. So instead of a 3,000 machine, it becomes 4,500 or 5,000 or 6,000, depends on the complexity. And they, um, they are 45 people in the company and they have thousands of machines out there, but this is their real innovation. Okay, last two things. First, security. If everything is connected, you will be hacked. And I, uh, I've seen, uh, I've worked with a number of people. If you have connected uh, machines like the robot, it's at the moment the security level is very low. This industry is getting used to the fact that 
uh, things are connected through the internet and it's really easy to get inside. And security needs to be more built in. So the rest of the world is really interested in blockchain. What kind of things can blockchain add to it? How can we share information and work together with people we don't necessarily completely trust, but we want to work together with? So blockchain is, very, uh, is a very big thing. And 10 years ago, somebody wrote this paper how uh, the Bitcoin and the, uh, the blockchain was possible. Satoshi Nakamoto, 10 years ago. And at the moment, a lot of consumers are interested, you know, how, how should I invest? What should I buy? And what should I sell? But companies are really working on the back office to improve it. I got into the business by buying 100 Bitcoins for 7 euro a piece. Then it went up to 700 uh, euro. And then I sold them and bought a Tesla. Now, it's great that I bought a Tesla, but it's really stupid that I sold it. This car cost me a million euro for just, uh, you know, for 700 euro of buying. I, sh I should have not ever do this. So blockchain is very hot. Everybody's having conferences about it. Did I see anything on blockchain in the, uh, in the, um, in the inter interclean? Yes, I saw one company. And this is interesting. They do an ICO. An ICO is that you make your own coin and you sell that. And they use the coin to reward the cleaner. They use it as a loyalty tool to reward the cleaner. So it's, I thought that was a clever way to use it. And here we have Klees. What is interesting about Klees? They have an app. They have a cleaning app. They will keep track of, uh, of tasks, orders, complaints, absence. They will investigate the building. They will tell the cleaners what to do. And that's all interesting, but not very special. They have a 1,000 people using it. They started two and a half years ago. But what's interesting is that they do an ICO. They create their own currency. They start on uh, the 30th of June. What, is, what does an ICO mean? They make their own cleaning coin. And the cleaning coin is used to uh, pay services, but also what they do is a percentage of the revenue is paid back to the people who use the app. So if you're a real good cleaner, you get coins from this company and these coins can come up in value. The, the, the ICO product started uh, this year and they're going to start in June and they want to get 16 million euro. And it's interesting, this whole interclean, I've never seen anything with the blockchain. The whole world is working on blockchain, ICOs, people are companies starting to raise money with their own coin. Never here except for cleans. Okay, so that was uh, really interesting. Now, apps, of course, are extremely popular. Here, all around you, there's about 30 or 40 apps. I didn't uh, cover them all. I covered three, which have different levels of innovation. And the last one is really interesting because, of course, we want to have tools which make it easier for the cleaner to do the work the way they want to, in the order that they want to, that they can op optimize themselves. In Hole 8, there are a lot of apps because, I mean, apps, the mobile remote control of your life is everywhere in cleaning. And it's interesting how Pancomp had a scanner. It was a QR code scanner, and you could basically scan every room and it would tell you how much time you spend there. Of course, now they have a app which the cleaner can use. You can investigate the building and come up with a cleaning schedule and you get all kinds of information. Finnish company, 20, 45 people work there, about 10,000 people use it in Europe, and it starts at three euro per person per month. And here we have Squeegee, a company from the UK, it has a couple of thousand businesses installed, and they're real time. They start at three euro and they go up from there and they have a nice dashboard. And if I, it's really instant. So if I basically go to your app and I say, okay, these are the, all the things I need to do. And as I say, hop, I swipe to the right, I swipe to the right, I'm done. And immediately you see in the background, the screen going up. So it's live, it's easy, it's nice, it's pleasant, gives you good information. The company is seven people and they've been working on it for five years. Two years ago, I looked at facility apps and uh, no, they have an app where which the cleaner and the manager can use and it's about from one euro to five euro per cleaner and 50 euro for the manager. What is now innovative after two years? Well, they have indoor navigation. So you just have a device here and you walk around and the thing knows where I am. So let's test that over out. It's over there on the screen. I'm going to walk around and let's see how good. And you just have a normal phone and it can track and trace inside the building. It knew exactly where I was, what rooms I was in, how much time I spent there. And that's, of course, incredibly efficient because you don't have to walk around. You don't have a manager to do it. You can immediately see where the cleaner is and how much he spends, how much time he spends. And this is a startup from America, which is integrated by facility apps. And nowadays, they just have also partners all around the world. So in two years, 
they've grown uh, quite a bit. 50% of sales now external. But this indoor navigation is quite a thing for the future. Yeah, indoor navigation, uh, people want to use beacons. Of course, we cannot use GPS, but your normal phone with your compass and your accelerator, the, which uh, measures uh, the speed, is already really good. So that's uh, facility apps. Next to Squeezy, there's another one, and they have a vision. We want to eliminate the manager. It was really, I, I thought it was interesting what the uh, facility apps, they charge one to five dollars for a cleaner and 50 euro for the manager because the manager does all the planning and he's really, he's really, it's really important that he becomes efficient. But they say, no, we want to make the manager, we want to make him go away. We want to, the, the cleaner to be their own manager to make sure that they can do it themselves. So that's their whole goal. And they have 20,000 people working on the, according to that concept. And they say, we want more freedom for the cleaner. So every time you choose a system, see if it gives more control to you and less control to the cleaner. Or if you want to use the, uh, the, the creativity and the freedom and, the, and the, the enthusiasm of the cleaner itself. So those are two different systems with, of course, there's always different kinds of level of support. Last subject is automation, which we ended up the previous presentation. What's happening to the robots? Well, I am, uh, I'm excited about my Tesla. My Tesla drives 95% of all my kilometers itself. I, I'm just normally working and the car drives itself. And there's a lot of industry going there. Everybody's going electric. And why? Because the batteries are getting really cheap. You will see in the whole industry, batteries will become better and cheaper. So all, all the things which now need a plug, I think in a couple of years, we will, they will be replaced with batteries because you don't need them anymore. The batteries are going down in price tremendously because of EV. Uh, in, uh, I think in five years, about 25% of all the new cars will be electric. In 10 years, it will be 50%. And in 20 years, you will be very hard to find a nice uh, combustion engine uh, car. It's really going very quickly. Daimler says, our industry is going electric, it's going to be autonomous, it's going to be connected, and it's going to be shared. We're going to share the devices in a much easier way, and that means new business models. And I think also we'll see that all these machines will be sold uh, per square meter, per cleaning, per quality, uh, quality uh, cleaned, and not anymore that you buy a machine or lease it per month. So that those kinds of business models are really interesting. So my car drives itself all the time, and what's happening with these autonomous driving robots here. What kind of innovation have we seen? I have three examples for you. This is the most simple one. And remember this, uh, remember this uh, car? Where did it come from? The good old back to the future car so you can go to the booth. What's the connection between the DeLorean and a cleaning machine? Well, you know, the DeLorean was really, really tough to program. You had to be an expert. And this machine is really easy. And this car is 38 years old. And now I, in my Tesla Model X, I have the same kind of door, finally. But this company already is busy for 70 years. Let me tell you about Marvin. Marvin is a small, cute robot. It's about 15,000 euro. And the most special thing about it is that it's really easy to program. You press the program key, you walk around. It can do 1,800 square meters uh, per, uh, in two hours. And then it basically repeats itself while not killing everybody who is in its way. Because of its ease of programming, is nominated for the Amsterdam Innovation Award. Interclean. We want to show this thing in action. So uh, everybody can do it, but they're now calling the person who knows how to do it. So I'll explain to everybody else. <laughs> yeah. It now works. I mean, they have two keys, one to program, one to do it, but they couldn't make it work when I was doing the, when the video. So there's small problems there. OK, one level, uh, one level up, a very nice autonomous. But there's a couple of things with robots. First, can they take care of themselves? Can they, take the can they come up with the electricity and all the fluids? Secondly, how difficult is it to program? If it's hard to program, the thing doesn't work. If you need an engineer to make it uh, go around the building, that, that is a pain in the butt. So you need to make that as easy as possible. Those are two variables which are really important to evaluate. OK, I'm sitting on the Have to Clean Tech robot. And this is a nice uh, robot because it can drive by a human being. And that's why you can program. You walk around and with the car, with the, with the robot. It can do 4,000 square meters an hour. And you just drive around it for the first time. And then you can update the map. There's an, uh, there's an uh, app here. And you can exactly see which apps it, uh, which map it creates. You can remove obstacles, add uh, move goals. You can add uh, things to the map. 
and then it will um, it can do four hours of autonomous driving about uh, 16,000 square meters of course that's the maximum this thing cost about um, 80,000 euros totally inclusive but I think it's a nice uh, it's a nice nice mix machine and they have five driving around at the moment and they uh, they're gonna add ten more so it's uh, really at the beginning of the uh, of the cleaning uh, revolution okay so last two um, the Chinese are really into robots and why I asked them this is a trio they're uh, there uh, at the corner directly behind us I said why are there's 10 million people now working in professional cleaning in China and I would say you have enough people they say no we are our people getting old and they're getting they're getting out of the workplace in an enormous uh, in enormous speed so in 10 years we do not have any person anymore to clean we need uh, so the, the robot market is very big and of course they they have a whole old way to create a robot they're not from the cleaning industry they're robotic guys they're PhDs in software they really know how to operate software and they built their own startup company so here we have trio and Trio is a startup from China. They have a bunch of uh, venture capital and a cleaning company. And it's cute. It's slow. This is a prototype. It's not working. They sold the Honda 25. They want to uh, release it to quarter free. And let's see if I can jump in front of it. Ah, yeah, it stops. It stopped. It didn't hit me. So um, it can have water and, uh, and it can work four hours on batteries. And, but the, the real interesting thing is it's nicely done. The software is interesting. And this one sells not for 30,000, like the German ones, the 20,000, like Kersker, but this one sells for 9,000 euro. So 9,000 euro is really very competitive. And you see that this company, you see the design, how much attention they pay to detail, how much attention they pay to the software. It's going to be very interesting. And so here you see how the computer how the computer sees the room and of course this is a software game how well can you map out the room how intelligently can you drive around the robot and this is not a cleaning company this is a software robotic company where people from uh, Beijing and from Shenzhen and from Hong Kong and it's really going to be interesting to see how far they're going to be next year yeah, and so we're used to China as a cheap production house. Well, these guys have studied in Hong Kong. They have uh, in Beijing. They uh, they got their first money. They have a big cleaning company as an investor. They are distributing all over China. They're doing hundreds and hundreds of robots. So they're bu building a. They have a nice market in China, and they're doing a professional job in coming to the outside world. So the face of China, how professional they are and how they come with new designs is going to be uh, different than just producing it and we'll come up with the concept. They're, uh, they're worth a visit. But the, um, the biggest surprise was Kersher this year. I mean, they're a huge company, $3 billion. Uh, 3 billion. And f f they, they, of course, made connected machines. They were into that, but they never made a robot until now. And they immediately got the overall innovation award. And why? Okay, we are at Kurger, which you have to spell K umlaut, A umlaut, because otherwise you cannot find it in the app. And Kurger is nominated for this robot. And what's so nice about this robot? Because it's fully autonomous, including recharging the battery and recharging all the fuel material. This thing can do 1,200 square meters, four hours on a, um, on a battery charge, and then it will refuel itself. And the nice thing is it starts at about 20,000 euro. So, uh, and, and they basically say, hey, the whole industry is going to tracking and tracing, fig figuring out what we need to do, going to evidence place the cleaning, only clean when you need to, because we haven't changed a lot. What I really don't know yet is how to program it. How easy is it to program? Okay, you just drive around, we'll see how that goes. But the future is everything is connected, autonomous, smart cleaning, and they are nominated for this robot. Okay, so these are the trends, uh, the green, the smart, the connected, the apps, the, all the big data, the, the standards we have. And this industry is getting a lot of pressure from outside and from within. Intelligent cleaning means we have to figure out, you know, about the, 
the, the 66 billion we spent, 33 is spent on office cleaning. And we know of office cleaning that they are also cleaned the same way. And about, uh, you know, they're over cleaned about three to four times, but you don't know where. We need to go to smart cleaning. The only way to do that is with sensors, smart systems in the background, and a little bit of intelligence to be figure out what we need to do. And of course, these robots, they have improved a great deal in two years. They've gone out in price, they become more intelligent, they become more autonomous. They pick up their own uh, flu uh, uh, fluids and their own electricity when they need to. And I think you'll see that that grows in the next couple of years. And I think we need that because there are so many people working in the industry. And I think uh, when we uh, see that the whole pollu the, the population will slowly become older, it will be difficult to find people. We need to have more efficient ways and get higher level of salaries to uh, support that. So it's uh, not that the robots will take over, but by using all this technology, we'll have the productivity go up a factor by two or by three, which I think this industry needs. Okay, this whole presentation is available on the internet. If you go to YouTube and you look for Interglean or my name, Vincent Everts, the videos are there, the presentation is there, and I'm really thanking you very much for coming here, and I wish you a lot of luck, and go find all these uh, tools you thought, you thought were interesting. If you have any questions, send me an email or ask me the question now. Thank you very much. <laughs> any questions? Anybody disagrees with what I said? Have a great show.